investigating allegations of pay-to-play corruption at the Clinton Foundation. Specifically, investigators are looking into whether Foundation donors were illegally given preference and access to Hillary Clinton while she was Secretary of State. Tonight, I'll talk with one of the Republican lawmakers who has been calling for months for a second special counsel to investigate the Clinton scandals. Congressman Matt Gates joins us. Also tonight, two Republican senators calling for the FBI to pursue a criminal investigation of Christopher Steele. He's the author of the Democratic-funded and discredited Trump dossier. Senators Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham say they have evidence Steele lied to the FBI. And President Trump tonight at Camp David for two days of meetings with Republican leaders. They'll be mapping out their 2018 election strategy and talking over their political priorities for the year. We'll take up those presumed strategies and likely priorities with conservative firebrand commentator and best-selling author Ann Coulter. Our top story tonight, the Justice Department launching a number of investigations into Clinton corruption. Today, we learned it's targeting the money machine that is the Clinton Foundation. Earlier this week, details emerged that the Justice Department was finally investigating the Clinton email scandal as well. Whether Clinton broke laws when she transmitted classified information from her unsecured personal and private email server. Her utter disregard for national security exemplified in this week's stunning revelation Namely, 18 classified emails found on a laptop belonging to her aide, Uma Abedin, and her estranged husband. Last month, the Department of Justice began questioning FBI agents about the controversial Uranium One deal as well. Details surfacing today concerning allegations the Clinton Foundation used pay-to-play politics while she was Secretary of State Sources now tell Fox News the investigation has been ongoing for months, led by the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI in Little Rock, Arkansas. At issue, whether the Clinton Foundation violated tax law and promised favors in exchange for donations to the foundation. Now, we already know the Clinton Foundation received $145 million in donations from a number of people connected to the Uranium One deal, which ended up resulted in Russia receiving 20% of all U.S. uranium reserves, $145 million and 20% of strategically important uranium that belonging to the United States. And no one investigated it at the time. The Department of Justice uh, alleging that uh, the Clinton corruption had been investigated, but it hasn't. The, uh, the Division of uh, uh, Justice also mired in scandal amid allegations of collusion and cover-ups as well. Congressional investigators say they've uncovered evidence the FBI failed to follow its own rules while investigating the Clinton emails, bypassing its own field offices to put the probe in the hands of deep state leadership in D.C. Meanwhile, the former FBI director in charge of that botched email investigation is accused by the Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley of leaking classified documents to a Columbia University professor. House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunes finally able to break through FBI stonewalling, gaining access to documents related to the Russia investigation that he first asked for back in August of last year. Congressman Nunes is trying to determine whether the Bureau used the discredited Trump dossier to begin its investigation of the president. And speaking of the dossier, it's not been such a good week for the authors of that smear effort. A federal court ruling the co-founders of Fusion GPS will have to hand over bank records to Congress, giving lawmakers a chance to follow the money behind the document. And just hours ago, Senators Grassley and Graham asking the Department of Justice to open an investigation of Christopher Steele, the British spy who supplied the phony so-called intelligence that went into the dossier, which was fabricated. Our first guest tonight says Congress has an obligation to expose the deep state's corrupt investigation of Russian collusion and the Democratic participation in the effort. 
Joining me tonight, Congressman Matt Gates. He serves on a number of committees, including Judiciary, Budget, and Armed Services. Congressman, great to see you. This has been an incredible week. Let's start with the most recent development, and that is the referral by uh, Chuck Grassley, Senator Grassley, the chair of the Judiciary Committee, uh, and Lindsey Graham uh, t for criminal investigation by the Justice Department. Your reaction? Bravo to Senators Grassley and Graham for highlighting the real crimes by the real criminals in this case. The only evidence we have of collusion with the Russian Federation is the evidence that the Democratic National Committee paid the Fusion GPS company to go pay Russians to tell lies about the duly elected president of the United States. And it is about darn time we made that the central focus of our collusion inquiries. And I'm glad to see that Senators Grassley and Graham understand the importance of the collusion between Russians and Democrats, and that we're able to root that out in the future, Lou. And the House Judiciary Committee, Congressman, on which you sit, why isn't there a turn there as well? Devin Nunes, uh, in my judgment, is a hero because he is the only one in his committee to produce evidence here of the, first of all, is exculpatory of the president and his administration and his transition team in any of the nonsense about collusion but is also driving uh, knowledge uh, about what really was going on here. And it's, I think at this stage, it is a, a straightforward, obvious attempt to subvert the president of the United States, duly elected, even before he got to the Oval Office. Well, you're absolutely right. It's like the deep state all got together to try to orchestrate a palace coup over our president. And Chairman Devin Nunes has been a leading fighter for democracy and the rule of law. Without Devin Nunes, we would not know about the text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, where they reference an insurance policy right. to save the American people from their own votes. Uh, in the House Judiciary Committee, I'm also proud of our work. Uh, we had an interview of Andrew McCabe under oath, sworn right. testimony, and within hours of him giving that testimony, he announced his retirement. I think one of the reasons may be the inconsistencies in his very testimony. And so we've got a series of investigations closing in on Hillary Clinton like a noose. You know, Congressman, this has to frustrate you as much as it does uh, any one of us in this country right now, concerned citizens. We, we have some people running the FBI and the Department of Justice who frankly look like they're the ones who should be behind bars. And we hear about people retiring suddenly and by March. In the case of McCabe, others are being reassigned. Uh, but no one is being told you're fired, you're losing your benefits, uh, taxpayer-funded benefits. And, and by the way, we're also going to send you to jail. Uh, this is disgusting conduct. I mean, and, and by the way, part of my disgust in all of this is that it goes on and on the investigations, whether they're in House or Senate committees, whether the investigation is from the FBI, which is obviously at the top rancid with corruption, or, or the Department of Justice, where the pr former president and an attorney general decide an investigation is really a matter, and the FBI director at the time, James Comey, says, yes, ma'am, it is now a matter, and she, <laughs> she was very pleased, I'm sure, at the, uh, the quick response of the highly highly uh, principled uh, James Comey. But the rest of the country is sick to their guts that this is our government. Well well, you're absolutely right. And the key difference about the way investigations were conducted in the past and the way they appear to be conducted uh, currently is that in the past, you had James Comey and a group of people who were doing Hillary Clinton's bidding, drawing the investigation away from the local field offices so that mm -hmm. they could pre-bake the outcome and clear Hillary Clinton of wrongdoing, even though there really was wrongdoing. In this case, you've got the Little Rock field office actually yeah, doing the investigative work, working yeah, up the case, and that is a key distinction that should give us trust. Yeah, and, uh, and you're right to highlight that, and we should give great credit uh, to the U.S. attorney, uh, to the FBI in Little Rock for taking that field office, taking on uh, the issue that should have been under investigation from the moment the, uh, that the issue was raised. Instead, we had, well, absolutely. we had top officials in Washington, all part of the D.C. swamp. You know, people talk about the swamp in that town, Congressman. But to see how pervasive the corruption is uh, and, and the conspiracy against this government and the subversion of this president, it, it's overwhelming. 
When we can't live in a swamp where the biggest alligator is the Department of Justice or the FBI. We've got to ensure that the government works for us and works for democracy and the rule of law. Here you had people literally plotting and planning in the event that Donald Trump were elected president to undermine and disrupt his presidency. And that's why this criminal referral regarding and, the Fusion point, GPS dossier is so important. We have to go. But I mean, I'm going to leave this with a question and we can we can uh, we can answer it over the weeks to come. But why in the world, if there was such concern about Russian meddling in our election, why is it that the President of the United States at the time, that is, President Obama, didn't demand access to those DNC servers, didn't demand uh, a response from Vladimir Putin and the Russians, and why wasn't he talking to the American people about what had him, uh, ostensibly at least, upset at uh, Vladimir Putin's interference? Uh, it is. It smells to high heaven from every quarter, uh, and there are a lot of questions still to be answered. Are we going to get to resolution Absolutely. in this new year, Congressman, as we wrap it up? Well, we absolutely have to. And when you look at the magnitude of the allegations against Hillary Clinton, right now, we don't have a circumstance where we'll have people at the highest levels of our government clearing the way for her if we are vigilant as a Congress and our oversight. That's why it's so important, the work we're doing, to make sure that we have an equal standard of justice that applies to everyone the same way, Lou. Congressman Matt Gates, as always, thanks for being with us and uh, keep up the good work. We're Thank coming you. right back with much, much more. Stay with us. It only gets, well, more complicated and even better. New hope for peace on the peninsula, North and South Korea, agreeing to their first official talks in more than two years. But what is the North up to? We take it all up with Ambassador John Bolton. And President Trump taking steps to build the wall. The administration seeking $18 billion to expand parts of the wall along the southern border. We'll take up the president's America First immigration policy with Ann Coulter here next. A new push for peace on the Korean Peninsula, North and South Korea, announcing that they've agreed to hold diplomatic talks beginning this upcoming Tuesday, the first meeting of its kind in more than two years. On the agenda, we're told, the upcoming Winter Olympics and ways in which to improve overall ties between the two countries. Tens of thousands of pro-government demonstrators pouring into the streets of Tehran today to counter the anti-government protests over the course of, of the past week and a half. And in New York City, the UN Security Council holding an emergency meeting to discuss the ongoing turmoil. U.S. delegates calling on the Iranian regime, as we look at these pictures of the streets of Tehran, to respect the rights of people to peacefully protest. Uh, this is quite, quite something to behold. And joining us now to assess it all, John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, now a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, Fox Business contributor. Great to have you with us, Ambassador. Let's start with the uh, the context of these demonstrations. Uh, we're now looking at pro-government demonstrations. The, uh, the Ayatollahs have said they're going to be very, very strict in their response to the anti-government demonstrators. Uh, what do you make of it and uh, how important a moment is this? Where is it headed? Well, I think these demonstrations we've seen over the past seven, eight days are a dagger pointed at the heart of the regime. I think it shows just how unpopular it is across the country. Uh, these are very different demonstrations than the 2009 protest against how so? Mahmoud. Well, these, these demonstrations are calling for an end to the regime. Back in 2009, they were just complaining about fraudulent elections, not calling for the Supreme Leader himself to be ousted. So we don't know exactly what will happen with this particular outburst, uh, but I think they've crossed a line here that shows how vulnerable the regime is. Uh, we've got the Revolutionary Guards poised, if need be, to, to strike these demonstrations down. There have even been reports some Iranian troops have been pulled back from Syria. That's how uh, dangerous they think this is. So whatever happens at the conclusion or whether these demonstrations continue, uh, it's really opened a new chapter. And I think the president's been okay. right on target in supporting them publicly. And uh, while the Obama, uh, the former Obama officials, national security officials, asking everyone to be very quiet, 
uh, well, the uh, demonstrations took place. A, a shameful, uh, shameful response yes. on the part of those uh, yes. people led by national security and former national security advisor Susan Rice. Let's turn to North Korea, the play to uh, bring peace to the peninsula. Uh, and apparently the ploy is working. Well, I think what the North Koreans are doing is trying to take advantage of a very weak uh, South Korean administration, trying to drive a wedge between them and the United States, uh, because I think they take President Trump's threat to use military force seriously. So I think this, uh, this is a, a ploy to get these uh, discussions going with respect to the Olympics, because the argument would be, well, certainly you can't do anything while negotiations are underway. Let's be clear. We've seen this before. In 2000 and 2004, in the Olympic Games those years, North and, and South Korean athletes marched together as one team. I mean, it was all propaganda, but, uh, but that's what they did then. And uh, obviously, with the Olympics in Korea itself, uh, this would be a big opportunity for Kim Jong Un, but I, I attribute part of this to the to the Trump pressure because of I course. think they're nervous enough that they want to buy some time to finish their work on but the nuclear on, program. But on the other hand, uh, what can the Trump administration do? Uh, what should be its policy response in the midst of this? Well, you know, the, the president was right at the September uh, speech to the U.N. General Assembly when he said denuclearization is the only way forward. The North is never going to give up its nuclear weapons voluntarily. We've seen that over 25 years. Uh, I think the president's tried to put pressure on China. They have not responded. So we're getting down to some pretty unattractive options. But I think I think it's important the president make the case that a North Korea with nuclear weapons is a threat to the United States, Japan, others in the region, and a threat globally because they will sell any of this technology uh, to other aspiring nuclear powers uh, for hard currency. Uh, very quickly, because we're over time as usual, Ambassador, it's your fault, not mine, I assure you. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the idea that uh, North Korea uh, will be uh, watching a, a, a constriction uh, by China of, uh, of its uh, trade, uh, again, uh, limiting exports of oil, steel, manufactured materials to North Korea. Will it happen? Will it have effect? Look, I think China is playing a double game again. We've seen uh, reports of it already, but but let's be clear: a lot of people are are busting the sanctions, including Russia and I'm sure Iran. Uh, I think that's the lesson of 25 years of failed policy. Should there be a boycott, an embargo? Look, I think I think we should do whatever we can to to avoid the use of military force, but we're running out of time, just given North Korea's technological progress. And James Clapper, the former DNI under President Obama, saying uh, the Trump White House should just get used to the idea of a nuclear North Korea. Has he lost his mind? Yeah, look, he, he and Susan Rice are singing off the same page. Uh, they failed utterly in their efforts. Uh, and now they're saying that uh, we have to accept the result of their failure. I think it demonstrates they weren't that uh, concerned about North Korea with nuclear weapons, or not much to mention Iran else, right? with nuclear weapons or other threats to the United States, precisely. Yeah, it, it didn't seem too concerned at all. Precisely. And once again, you've taken us over time, Ambassador Bolton, and we want to thank you for doing so. Appreciate Plead you being guilty. Here. Glad to do it. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. Do you have any confidence the Justice Department can credibly investigate Clinton corruption before purging the deep state upper management of the DOJ and FBI? We'd like to hear from you. Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook and Instagram. Well, Lou Dobbs tonight. On Wall Street, another record-breaking day for stocks. Winning never gets old, does it? The Dow surging 221 points, the S&P up 19, the Nasdaq gaining 59. Volume on the big board, 3.2 billion shares. In this shortened trading week, the Dow and S&P posted gains of more than 2%. The Nasdaq up more than 3%. The race is underway. And the economy rounding out 2017 with another almost 150,000 jobs in December to a 0.1 million jobs created last year. Unemployment holding at 4.1 percent. That is the lowest unemployment rate since 2000. A reminder, listen to my reports three times a day, coast to coast, on the Salem Radio Network. Up next, good news from the FBI for a change. A new investigation into pay-for-play allegations against the Clinton Foundation. That and a few other Clinton subjects, well, We'll take that up in my commentary here next. Stay with us.
A lot of developments this week in two cases that the FBI and Obama Justice Department tried to bury and the Clintons tried to run from. And one development in the Democratic National Committee and Clinton campaign financing of the anti-Trump dossier. All the developments are substantive and mean that there is now a chance, are you ready? A chance the justice will win out. After an appallingly long period of stonewalling and brinksmanship, the FBI and Justice Department have finally agreed to congressional oversight. Isn't that nice of them? And why are we putting up with their arrogance? They decided to meet the demands of the Oversight Committee, the House Intelligence Committee, and its chairman, Devin Nunes, to have access to all documents and witnesses in the anti-Trump dossier investigation. And today, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley referred the author of the democratically funded anti-Trump dossier to the Justice Department for criminal investigation because he's a lying whatever. Former MI6 smear merchant. The FBI is investigating now as well the Clinton Foundation and pay-for-play corruption, which they should have been doing years ago. This, as the Justice Department, is reportedly reopening its investigation of the Clinton email scandal, all in addition to the opening of an investigation into the Uranium One scandal. Let's pause here just for a moment. The scandal is this. The Clinton Foundation received $145 million dollars and the Secretary of State and the other members of Cepheus and the President of the United States, Barack Obama, permitted the Russians to get 20% of our uranium reserves. Does that sound like a strategic issue for national security? You're right, and not one of them objected. And while these developments are certainly welcome, I doubt many of us will get overheated about the prospects of resolution anytime soon. In my opinion, success in bringing the principles of these scandals to justice depends on how soon the Trump administration can clean out the corrupt officials who inhabit the highest levels of our Justice Department and FBI. The deep state and the deeply entrenched Obama dim leftovers are still running many of the nation's top law enforcement and national security units and organizations within the FBI and Justice Department in particular. Agencies rife with conflicts and political corruption, including the Office of the Special Counsel. And those officials need to be rooted out and rooted out soon, so the cases can be quickly solved rather than perpetuated. That will be a new concept in the Justice Department if it can only be introduced by the Trump administration. The corrupt officials of what has become the administrative state that now frustrates the honorable and committed public servants of justice and the FBI, they deserve far better. Certainly we do, the American citizens. The quotation of the evening now from Albert Einstein, and he said this, The world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. And for a decade, perhaps longer, we've had a lot of people who've done nothing about the evil that has seized the swamp. We're coming right back. Stay with us. President Trump and Republican leaders meeting at Camp David. They're talking taxes, infrastructure, national security, the budget, and even more. We have a lot of things to work on, a lot of things to accomplish, and we're making America great again. We take up the president and the Republicans' 2018 legislative priorities. Ed Rollins and Ann Coulter join us. And what do you do if you can't find waves to surf? Well, these surfers solved the problem with a drainage ditch. We'll show you their adventurous stunt here next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. President Trump at Camp David this weekend, where he's meeting with GOP leaders to talk about the 2018 agenda and their policy priorities. Joining me now, Ed Rollins, former White House political director under Ronald Reagan and Fox Business contributor. Great to see you. Thank you. My pleasure. This is quite a, an extraordinary opening of developments here. Suddenly, the Clintons have been recognized as possibly being uh, felons in waiting. Well, as, I, as I've said to you before, the, the, the problem with Washington, D.C. was they were all convinced that she was going to be the president. Uh, and so everybody basically tiptoed around them when they should have been investigating them. Uh, for the last year, for whatever reason, they've gone after Trump. Uh, 
And I think to a certain extent, the part of it is that Trump never took charge of the, of the, of the Justice well, Department. Now, now we need to fix it. Now we need to find out the public has a right to know what was going on and where the real corruption is. Yeah, you know, I, I have to say the idea that what's going on here is, is far more, though, uh, than simply waiting for Her Majesty to have assumed the presidency. It, it is also clearly an organized effort on the part of the previous president with organizing for America, 30,000 strong, a president who is going to continue to work against uh, the Republican president who was elected uh, to succeed him. Right. I, I, it's never been done in our history, and everyone in the national media seems to be quite content to just let it occur. Well, they're letting it occur because they didn't like Trump, and they, they basically are doing everything. Well, the can. hell with them. Well, I agree with that, and the, that's what democracy is about. American public got to go vote. It's his agenda, and what he has done, the amazing thing that what he has done is he's repealed all this crap that, uh, that Obama put in, all these executive orders. You see the business community. You see the, the, the market. You see the job numbers. Uh, economic uh, growth. Economic growth. Uh, ah. It's because they were repressed by the executive orders of the Obama administration that was an anti And just his attitude in general. Absolutely. And, and, was, I, and, and yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing that's it's, it's worked so well so far. I, I, I can't even begin to comprehend why so much corruption that is so obvious at the top of the FBI, at the top of the Department of Justice, has not resulted in more people stepping forward in those agencies, made up of fine men and women serving the country. I, I mean, they've got to be sick to their stomach to look up and see a James Comey uh, these, uh, and these hacks, these corrupt hacks, serving in important positions within the Department of uh, Justice and the, and the FBI taking money, uh, uh, it's just disgusting. Well, if the fact that Comey was leaking documents, uh, he, he set this special prosecutor up. Uh, he basically admitted that he basically sent a document to his pal, who was a, a college professor, to call for a special prosecutor. I mean, how outrageous is that? As far as I'm concerned, he is totally... But on the face, just on the face of that, why are, aren't the leaders of the Republican Party saying this special counsel ends now? It was a fraud to begin with. It is a greater fraud now because we know there's no evidence against President Trump or any of his organization. Well, as we have said repeatedly on this show, the Justice Department does not have leadership. And the reality is the president has to put leadership. Yeah, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Speaker Ryan. I'm talking about Speaker's, Majority Leader uh, McConnell. Is, Why not say that's it? You're done. They should. And uh, the reality is they, they don't want to do that. They don't want to slap the hands of their own members, and they should. And if they want to be a part Slap of this, the hands around. of their own members. Well, their own members are out basically getting all this limelight and not doing anything. The importance of this meeting at Camp David this weekend is they better come down from this mountain with an agenda. Here's what we want to do. Here's what we're going to do together. Uh, and here's what our priorities are for this election year, which is very, very key. Should amnesty be on it? And where is the damn wall? Amnesty can't be on it if you don't have the wall. If you want to do immigration reform, which is what this is, and DACA is a part of that, is you basically have to have the borders secure. The president wants to secure the borders by basically putting up a wall. That's what he promised the American public. And if he doesn't get that, he should not sign off on anything else. Well, and you know that Chuck Schumer is going to insist that, oh, we'll give you some funding for the wall. We'll talk about it as a virtual wall. It'll be high technology. And, oh, yes, we'll put it in the, uh, we'll, we'll appropriate the money over in the House and everything will be fine. And you'll never see the damn wall. Well, someone other than the president has to take this up in the Congress and make be the champion of it and make sure it happens. Someone on these, these appropriations. Who committees. in the Congress of the United States right now has the strength, the power, and the credibility to do that? Well, the two people you mentioned in the leadership aren't going to do it, so someone has to do it. Someone has to decide, this is a, my priority. Uh, it used to be uh, uh, the congressman from San Diego now has a son in the Congress. Uh, Duncan Hunter. Duncan Hunter, who basically did a very effective job of building a wall and stopped Im illegal immigration in San Diego. Yeah, but he, they still owe him 700 miles of fence. Well, they do. <laughs> and it even says, must build the wall in the legislation. I'm telling you, what a, bio, a bunch of lying snakes. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I have to believe every day that President Trump goes to work. He, there's one part of him that may not enjoy this uh, job, and that is having to deal with all of these snakes. Well, he's learned, he's, he's, he's learned it's a lot more complicated than he may have thought, and he doesn't care. He's going to get it done. Yep, he's getting it done. Amazing. Great to have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Please roll the video now and watch as these athletes use their boards. Yeah, that's right. We're talking a drainage ditch. It's not really a ditch. It's more of a slide.
The group was planning on going to the snowy slopes, but they couldn't resist the fun and spontaneous detour. Ah, that looks like a heck of a lot of fun. That's even straight enough. I might make it to the bottom. I wouldn't be on the board, but at least I'd make it to the bottom. Up next, new investigations targeting Bill and Hillary Clinton over pay-to-play allegations at the Clinton Foundation. I know, you're like me. You're thinking, yeah, we've known that for years. So what's the deal? We'll take up the renewed efforts to root out the corrupt Clintons. Matt Slap joins us here next and later. Best-selling author, conservative commentator, Ann Coulter joins me to take up the latest battle over immigration, border security, and yes, the wall. Those are prototypes of the wall. Pick your favorite. We're going to give prizes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Joining us tonight, Matt Slap, chairman of the American Conservative Union, great American. Good to have you with us, Matt. Great Happy to be New with Year. you, Lou. And what in the world? I mean, did, did Steve Bannon just do uh, the president a great service by clearing the decks of himself? Uh, you know, uh, that, that could be the case, Lou. I, I'm still in a little bit of shock. I'll, I'll admit to you that this whole thing happened. I'm, in, I'm thunderstruck that you would let uh, an author into the West Wing for this period of time and give him so much access and have him be in meetings. I just... Well, he was across thing, the street, as I understand it. He wasn't actually in there. They actually denied him access. Well, uh, let's just say this. He got to talk to too many people on too many occasions to, towards an effort that was never going to do any good for the president. When you're a presidential staffer, as I've been, you spend yeah. your time in the White House helping the president and his agenda. You do not, you're not there for yourself. Yeah, but you know, I, I have to say, I've never seen more rat skunks in any administration than I saw in the early days of this one. I mean, there are people I there agree. who fought him at every way, and they were chicken. They were cowardly, let me put it that way. They were not, look. And, th what, and they talked behind his back. They were, I, I mean, some of the vilest people imaginable. Low and, and they weren't even good at, many of them weren't even good at their jobs. So they were incompetent, they're, and they're not helping the president. And by the way, on the agenda front, the president got a lot done. It was a fantastic year, but I would have yeah. wished that we could have gotten started sooner with competence. I give General Kelly a lot of credit for cleaning, cleaning it up. Yeah, you, you, you've got to, and the president has had a, you know, obviously he had had a belly full because he's the guy making yes, the he changes. Did. Uh, yes, uh, he did. Rebecca Mercer making a statement saying, I support President, can we put that uh, up, please, uh, that full screen? I support President Trump and the uh, platform upon which he was elected. My family and I have not communicated with Steve Bannon in many months, and it provided no financial support to his political agenda, nor do we support his recent actions and statements. Uh, you know, that comes from, uh, he, you know, the, the folks who were his principal backers, uh, one of the president's uh, uh, principal backers. I, and everybody is now focused, uh, I, I guess, I, there's this clarity that results, and that is on the president and his policies and not those who want to somehow delude themselves into thinking they're this president's equal intellectually uh, in right. terms of wit or political savvy or connection with the American people. They're damn fools if they even remotely think that. Yeah, I, I've had this question on rival networks, Lou. They say, well, where are conservatives going to go? Are they going to go with Bannon or are they going to go Jeez. with Trump? They're that's dreaming. Not even, they love that's that. That's not even a question that needs to be answered. The conservative movement in this country is head over heels happy yeah. with what Donald Trump is doing as president, and that yeah. relationship grows stronger. Too, I'm going to disagree with you. I, yeah. I don't think it's a conservative movement at all. It's I think beyond it's a, that. I think it's a Trump movement. Right. Uh, it's populist in nature, uh, but it is a broad appeal on the part of this president that makes him successful. Uh, and I, I, I truly believe this is a Trump movement, and it is very powerful. And with every achievement, it gets only stronger. I think that's right. And the thing is, what he did to the coalition that was pulled together to win this election is he's giving hope to a lot of people that believe this country was on a hopelessly left-wing path. And now they look at this country and they say, look, we really can save it. We can make things here. We can, we can grow and create jobs and companies. It was only the damn liberals and the rhinos who had any question about it. Working That's men right. and women, the middle class in this country, know what America is. It's where America resides. And, and without this president, they are the ones who would be at the back of the line. And that would have been a damn shame.
I, you know, we end almost, uh, you know, every evening, it seems, saying, you know, thank you, President Trump, because otherwise this country would be in